I can't get a driver's license. I can't get a state ID. I can't go anywhere outside of New York. I can't see my extended family. I can't fly at all. I can't apply for federal aid or scholarship. So I can't get a job. I can't start a career. I can't vote. I have no say in this government. I can't totally relax. I have to be careful of what to say and what not to say. I can't even think about moving out of my parents' house. I can't have my parents by my side. I can't really sleep at night without being worried about immigration agents still breaking down my door. I don't feel like I have the same rights. I can't live under the sunlight. And I can't see the American dream. So it was at the end of my sophomore year in high school. Uh, I was asking my dad about getting a driver's license and looking at different colleges that I was going to apply for in two years. And then he had some really bad news to tell me. He sat me down in the living room and then told me that I was undocumented and that I had no citizenship in America, that I had no green card or permanent residency. And then that's when I realized that everything that I was dreaming about was fake and my life was all a lie. I learned about the consequences of being undocumented from a close family member. She told me, and she told my grandparents, and she told many people, that no matter how smart I am, no matter how good I did in school, without a green card, I'm going nowhere. So it hurt my heart, is saying, no matter how good I do, it's gonna be fruitless. Then I feel like I wanna do well, but it's useless. So what should I do? When I was about 14 years old, I was working at a community center. It was my first job, but at the end of the summer, the rest of the kids, they went home with a stipend, a $2,000 stipend, and I received nothing. So I went to the director of the program and he had told me that I had immigration problems. I went home, my parents were, I remember just seeing the fear in their eyes, you know, and they told me that I was lucky that, you know, the director of the program had done nothing else at the time. I thought that I had no future and I would just end up without a job after college. And I, I found no point in going to school or doing well in any of my schoolwork because it was all for nothing. It's that numb feeling that I got. So I go to school, I listen to class, but I don't feel like doing homework. I don't feel like studying for tests. So I never study and I never do my homework. I have uh, many, many days missing and my grades fell. I felt really helpless. I thought my parents would be able to sort it out, knowing how powerless they were, knowing how powerless I was. I knew it was an extreme injustice. I just didn't know what to do about it. What I didn't know about that time was that I would still be undocumented nine, ten years later. At the age of five, I moved from the Philippines to America and grew up in New York City. And my parents were originally planning to just come here to visit my grandparents. Our visas were meant to be expired in 2001, so they decided to overstay. And it was because there were better opportunities here in America than there was in the Philippines. If I was in the Philippines, I wouldn't be doing everything I was right now. My father left 10, 20 days after I was born. My father would not be able to support my mom and me. And also, my dad and mom want to have more child, but the Chinese government will not let you have any more child. So my dad decided to leave for America. From one to eight, literally, I didn't have a father. So my mom, she said, Rue, I'm going to take you to the U.S. to see Papa. She didn't tell me that I am coming to the United States to stay. My family and I came to the United States when I was two years old. My dad was involved um, with the political party in Bangladesh. He became violently targeted. We had the really bad misfortune of hiring an attorney who not only scammed us, but threatened to call immigration on us. My parents decided to be really quiet about this. Our visas had expired by this time and we became undocumented this way. 
When I was 17, um, I started living by myself because that year, the letter of deportation was sent out. My dad and mom is working in Chinese restaurants out of state. I haven't seen my dad for about a year and three months. My sister lives with me. My younger brother is living with my grandparents in China. Our family is shattered apart. I had to learn to make money and help out my father and mother because they work so hard all their life. I work in a Chinese restaurant six days a week, 11 to 11. For the work that I do, I am not paid as fairly as those who have legal status. I was extremely lucky. I had gotten accepted to Sarah Lawrence, the most expensive school in America, in fact, with the full scholarship, so I was able to go. Since I've graduated college, I've been without a full-time job for about two years. In many ways, it's made me feel worthless. You know, I have an obligation to my family to help them out financially. I failed on that part in many senses. It's very hard for us to find a job. And even if we find a job, it makes our employers very easy to exploit us. We're under the condition where we have to make a living in order to survive. So either we take up what's in front of us or we just sit and do nothing. And I prefer to be someone who will do something. At the beginning, I was extremely upset. I was extremely you know, furious after you know, going to job, job interviews, getting job offers and not being able to take them because I wasn't a US citizen. I did not have legal work authorization. I was depressed because after you graduate, you're supposed to be able to get a job. You're supposed to be able to move forward with your life. What was I supposed to do with my life? I, I didn't know. There are a lot of nights I would sit in my room crying on my bed and even like um, thinking about taking my own life because I, I saw no future for myself. And a lot of people don't know that. It was for stupid reasons, just because I couldn't go to school or start a career, but to me, that meant a lot. I've been receiving different acceptances from colleges and universities, but I'm not expecting much because I know I can't be able to afford any of these. Guidance counselors were really clueless about my status. I would come to my guidance counselor and ask her, are there any scholarship opportunities for me? Can I get grants or loans to pay off college? And the same answer would come from my guidance counselor and my as the principal, they'd say to me, we don't know if you can, and you probably can't. It's just another slap to the face when they tell me that we can't help you. My grandmother said that she knew that her granddaughter, me, will be able to do something with my life someday. It's only because of green card, only because of the situation that I'm in. I remember that was the second time that she cried in her life. So the first time when I left China. So that pushed me to study hard and to go to college. On the day that I'm off, I attend a class at BMCC. The reason why I can only attend one class is because I can only afford one class. At the rate that I am going at, it will take 20 years to get my degree. I would say it's not the best life, but it's the only one that I can have right now. I think you can choose how you live your life. I think I saw other undocumented youth come out as undocumented, unafraid, unapologetic. There were people like me who had no resources, who had the same immigration status like I did. If they were gonna put themselves on the line, then I had to put myself on the line too. It wasn't fair either way. Um, we were all in this together and every little bit counts. It made me feel like I had a purpose. By joining some of the activism that was going on, like I found a little bit of relief for myself personally. I realized that I'm not the only one out there. I'm not the only one struggling through this. We have been working together to really help push this movement in America. I don't want my sister to face everything that I've been facing. I want her to have a better life without any difficulties, without any emotional damages to herself. I want to start looking into helping 
families, helping parents get their citizenships, helping families reunite in this country. I hope one day my family will be reunited. And hopefully everybody like me will be able to have that chance. I wish that one day I will be able to help those who were in the similar situation. I hope that I'm really standing up for myself. I hope that I'm standing up for my family. I hope that I'm standing up for other people like me. I... My life since I was two years old was colored by my immigration status. And I want to change that for other people because like people shouldn't go through what I do, what all 11 million of us are going through right now. Where you're born is really accidental at the end of the day. You could be me. We're all the same kinds of people. We could be students, we could be the person you see at a park, your best friend even. We're not any more different than you are. We're only different because of a piece of paper. Things don't have to be they are currently. That's what motivates me, seeing that change is possible. I really want to be able to help undocumented youth out there and give them a sense of hope and really a brighter future for all of us. So we will try our best to help and to reach out to whoever needs us. Many of us have many skills and talents, but we're suppressed and limited due to our status. You cannot measure what all of us undocumented immigrant youths can do when our abilities and our potentials are rich. Living today, living tomorrow, there's always hope. <laughs>